Hey guys, welcome to Enzyme Mental. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button below and click the bell so you don't miss any notifications. So today I wanted to give you a new way to look at the development of Parkinson's disease and also a few easy things you can do consistently to avoid Parkinson's disease provided you begin early enough. Parkinson's disease results from nerve damage in the substantia nigra of the basal ganglia. It's quite a mouthful to say, but basically this is the area of the brain responsible for controlling muscle tension and movement. Ordinarily, these cells produce the critical neurotransmitter dopamine. The early stages of Parkinson's are defined by slight tremors in one hand, arm, or leg, and as the disease progresses, the tremors and weaknesses affect limbs on both sides of the body. As with yet another degenerative disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's is advanced and accelerated by several factors, including oxidative stress, inflammation, glutathione depletion, and mitochondrial dysfunction. Again, as I've told you plenty of times before, mitochondria are the energy furnaces inside every one of our cells. So how does gut inflammation contribute to Parkinson's? Chronic gut inflammation, like what we see with Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, instigates production of a protein known as alpha-synuclein along the walls of the colon. Alpha-synuclein is a hallmark of the dying brain neurons that distinguish Parkinson's. Chronic gut inflammation, especially gut inflammation experienced early in life, can magnify the accumulation of alpha-synuclein throughout the brain. So how does something like this happen? While researchers aren't certain, two prevailing theories are that first, heavy metals and other inflammatory chemicals could travel to the brain via the bloodstream, this would certainly provoke an inflammatory immune response, or that alpha-synuclein accumulations could travel from the gut to the brain via the vagus nerve, which is the body's longest cranial nerve extending from the colon to the brain stem. Like Parkinson's, gut inflammation doesn't develop overnight. Gut inflammation is often the end product of years of poor eating habits, stress, and food allergies, among other factors. And just like with battling candida, you need to be patient and persistent. So what can we do about all this? Eliminating all processed and or highly glycemic food is a good first step. But you might also want to begin an elimination diet to see if there are any foods that you eat regularly that are causing you trouble. A digestive enzyme, specifically one tailored for multiple strains of food intolerance, can help reduce inflammation also, along with helping you get the most nutrition out of your meal. You should also consider taking an enzyme on an empty stomach to break down any toxins and or undigested protein, as these are both extremely inflammatory to the gut. You can also restore the gut lining with compounds like L-glutamine, zinc carnosine, gelatin, and bovine colostrum. So you should really think about incorporating any or all of these things into your daily regimen. Gut inflammation often begins very early in life, so this is particularly important for parents with young children. If your child's rainbow-colored breakfast cereal says fortified with vitamins, you can bet that it had none to begin with. Isn't this enough of a warning? Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.